So the world is not AID. Conditioning information changes over time, and traders see more information than we see. Our last issue on how we can deal with these kinds of problems, conditional versus unconditional models. A problem is that the parameters of a model may vary over time. That's what I call a conditional model. A classic example is the conditional capital asset pricing model. We may say that expected returns depend on conditional betas times a conditional factor risk premium. Or translated into discount factor language, there may be a discount factor, which is a linear function of the market return. But that linear function may change over time. There are the parameters that vary over time of the discount factor. So we need AT and BT to make the conditional expectation of MR equal to 0. Or, translating again, there is a return on the market portfolio, which is on the conditional mean variance frontier. It satisfies, it's, it is the minimum conditional variance portfolio for every given conditional mean. That's an example of a conditional model because its parameters vary over time. A counterexample is the consumption-based model, which is an example of what I call an unconditional asset pricing model. This is an asset pricing model where M equals beta times consumption growth to the minus gamma. And notice, beta and gamma don't vary over time, at least in this version of the model. They are not parameters that vary over time. That M satisfies the conditional mean of that M times excess returns is zero. And therefore, we can condition this down transparently to an unconditional representation. And we can include the managed portfolios and the instruments. This is a well-behaved model. That model is, in some sense, less well-behaved. Now, what's wrong with a model that's not so well-behaved like this, a model with time-varying parameters? Well, here's the problem. Take this conditional asset pricing model and try to condition it down. 0 equals ET times discounted payoff, where the discount factor has these time-varying coefficients into it. Try conditioning down. Uh-oh, can't do it. You can't get from there to here. You can't find a new A and B that are constants such that that implies that. The proof is simply try it and get stuck. You will. So what have we seen? We've seen that a conditional model does not imply an unconditional model. A model that's con completely conditional with time-varying parameters doesn't imply that there's an, a corresponding version of an unconditional model. The language is a little confusing, because you're used to thinking conditional expectation implies unconditional expectation. But this is different. It's a conditional model, which does not imply an unconditional model. Now, a little bit of a mind-blowing implication, uh, since very clear how a conditional model doesn't imply an unconditional model. That means that the statement a return is on the conditional mean variance efficient frontier does not imply that the same return is on the unconditional mean variance efficient frontier. Because, well, you've seen the theorems. Those things tie together. So conditional mean variance efficiency does not imply unconditional mean variance efficiency. It's quite possible for return to always be conditionally mean variance efficient and not to be unconditionally mean variance efficient. Conversely, however, let's look at the second one, the unconditional model. Uh, suppose we have an unconditional model, a model with fixed parameters, and that model prices all of our managed portfolios. Uh, that's true. Well, of course, if that's true, then that's true. So an unconditional model, which prices all the managed portfolios, implies a conditional model. So this no, the non-time varying parameters, of course, are the same as time varying parameters, which happen not to vary over time. That's not that surprising when you see it, but of course, the language looks a little bit surprising. The implication for mean variance efficiency is also surprising. Uh, it means that if a return is on the unconditional mean variance frontier, including those managed portfolios, then it's on the conditional mean variance frontier. Exactly the opposite of what the language would make you think. Well, mean variance frontier is different from conditional expectations. So this is also a case where unconditional implies conditional, but conditional does not imply unconditional. Now, that's all very fine and well, but what happens when you have a conditional model and you want to think about testing it? I can't just say, throw up your hands and go find an unconditional model. And yes, we can come to a partial solution. So if you want to think about the conditional cap M, what can you do? The best you can do is let us try to model the conditioning information. So if we have, for example, a variable ZT, an instrument that we think is, is, is driving our conditioning information, 
the natural thing to do is let's make a and b functions of the zt and create an explicit conditional model and see what we can do with that. That's a good idea. And here it is. Let us model the conditioning information, a of z and b of z, since we've decided this variable z captures the conditioning information. And as long as we're making functions, we might as well make linear functions, because nonlinear for z squared is just another instrument. So all functions are basically linear functions. So uh, modeling the dependence of the parameters leads you to write our discount factor in this form, a0 plus a1z, b0 plus b1z, rt plus 1. But wait a minute. Now we've got an unconditional model again. We just have an unconditional model with a few extra factors. Instead of m being a linear function of only the market return, now m is a linear function of also the variable zt and the product zt times rm, or that, that's another managed portfolio in itself. So a conditional cap m and one information variable zt is equivalent to an unconditional three-factor model. And that's an interesting uh, view on where multi-factor models may come from. Multi-factor models may just reflect conditioning information driving around the parameters of an ultimately conditional one-factor model. In any case, it unites together lots of different things. Any conditional factor model can be re-expressed as a larger number of factors in an unconditional model. Of course, it's only a partial solution. Because to do this, I need variables zt that I can see. I can't use variables zt that are just in agents' heads. So if you truly believe there's a conditional model where a and b vary around based on just agent information, I don't know how to derive unconditional implications of a model like that that we can test. So what have we learned? Conditional information matters a lot. And I hope I've sensitized you to information sets, the agent's information set the variables that we include to forecast things or as instruments in a study or just unconditional means. Those are three different information sets. Don't confuse them. Good models don't assume that agents only see the variables we see. Good models think that recognize that agents and markets see way more than we see, and they derive correct implications that condition down to the information set that we can see. Finally, another great unification. Time series is really the same as cross-section. Instruments are the same thing as managed portfolios. Fama and French reforming their portfolios every year and looking at unconditional asset pricing is exactly the same as somebody else who might run regressions and model time-varying conditioning information sets. They're just different ways of expressing the same ideas. Use the one that's simplest and most beautiful for your application.